firstly, I want to address that I don't have a lot of time to record or edit videos at the moment, hence why I'm uploading less. And I also have some unfortunate things going on in my life, which I can't really avoid, but I am get getting better. Anyway, enough talk about me, on with the video. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 1 of All The Mods 7 to the Sky. To begin this mod pack, we need to do slash skyblock DUI. Create a new team, click create. Then we now have an island. We also have a tree, which we're going to need to pump down, chop down. All the mods 7 to the sky. This is obviously an all the mods mod pack. There is plenty of mods in here. Uh, this is kind of a kitchen sink, not an expert style mod pack, which is what I, I want at the moment. And I also want a sky block. So to begin, we need to collect some logs and some planks. I'm going to actually leave that log there just so that the leaves don't decay. And then we will expand this island just so that all of the saplings don't fall and we lose them. So do we have twerking for trees? Yes, we do. So if you spam shift key, the trees will grow. Very nice. Time to chop some more logs down. Wait, we, we have vein mine. Good, so we have enough logs. Crafting table time. Claim the quest. So we need to get string for obviously the sieve and the sieve mesh. We also need to start getting cobblestone. Yes, we can do pebbles. If you shift right click on grass, it will give you pebbles. Nice supply of cobblestone. We need to make a crook to be able to get silkworms for string. Bane on the leaves, we now get silkworms. Then we can place the silkworms on the tree. Then over time, this will, will the, inf the infestation will complete and then we can break it for string using this crook. We did get a nest from that, didn't we, from that tree? Okay, that might come in handy later on. The tree has finished infesting. So we can vein mine all of these for lots of string. String can be made into these meshes. We can also pick up a sieve. Uh, where do we want to place this? Should we just place it somewhere on this grass? So you can place the, the string mesh in the sieve. So to actually be able to pick up a quest, <laughs> we have skipped past things, obviously. I always end up doing that. We need a hammer. And the goal of X Nilio is to allow for this sky block to actually work. So we can actually generate resources through X Nilio, like iron, copper, gold, etc. Things along them nature. So to be able to use this hammer, we just need to place some cobblestone on the ground. We can vein mine it into gravel and pick up the quest. Let's pick up this sieve. One quest. So we can also get sand from using the hammer if we hammer down gravel again. But for the moment, we should probably upgrade this mesh to be actually using flint. So pretty much now we want to actually start claiming or actually start sifting things. So we need to make an iron mesh and an iron furnace. And we also need to go up here and make a cobblestone generator. So we are going to need to do that. But for now, where is my flint mesh? Let's start sifting things. Might as well pick up some chests so that we can actually store some stuff because my inventory is getting very full. Alright, we can make a lovely chest and store all of these things, which we're getting from sifting. And let's just place everything else in there. So next, we need to make some sand. And yes, I am using an auto clicker to be able to make cobblestone. You can also use compressed blocks and hammer these down. Just so that you can hammer down more blocks at a time. Next, we need to make some dust. Next, we need to make a barrel out of wood. Actually, we might be able to use the cheating me method. The cheating method actually means that we can use a glass bottle. We can fill that up with the water source, which is currently on the ground. And then we can put it in the barrel and we get water 
before it actually starts raining. Yeah, cheating method. Now with the water in these barrels, we can craft up some clay. Clay is made by placing dust in barrels full of water. The clay which we have now, we can craft into a crucible if we start sifting some dust to get bone meal. Seven pieces of bone meal later, we now have enough to craft up some porcelain clay, make an unfired crucible, fire it in a furnace, fired crucible. We can now place this crucible pretty much anywhere, a torch underneath it to give it heat source. This is the best we can do at the moment. We can't do anything better. We can then place four pieces of cobblestone in the crucible and that should start melting into lava at <laughs> a very slow rate. In the meantime, we need to go and collect some more of these pebbles. We can make all of these pebbles into cobblestone. We need a whole lot of gravel. Yeah, so to be able to make what we want, we need to obviously start sifting gravel so that we can get iron. Iron comes from sifting gravel in a mesh, which is flint or higher. Higher tier meshes give obviously a higher chance to actually obtain iron. So it tends to be better to use a higher tier mesh. And you can also build the sieves so that you can have a multi-block. At the moment we have four sieving at a time. You can have up to 25 sieving at a time in a 5x5. Five five. So at this point I'm going to be farming loads of the crushed ores. So that I can craft a cobblestone generator. So that I don't need to start harvesting or don't need to continue harvesting stone pebbles from the ground. So that we can do it a little bit quicker. So this cobblestone generator, it will output to adjacent inventories, I believe. But for this purpose, we can just output it straight into a drawer above and it's just free cobblestone. So it was at this point when I decided to build a compacting drawer instead of the single drawer, which we have so that we don't need to craft compressed cobblestone just to make my life a little bit easier. But to be able to actually get the compacting drawer we need with redstone hence why we are sifting dust in with an iron mesh in a sieve to produce just a tiny bit of redstone which we need well that compacting drawer has really helped out so we've gathered up enough materials to make a uranium block which we can speed up the lava production in the crucible oh so much quicker and to come to think about it we are going to need to improve the storage situation so, how are we going to improve the storage situation? Let's make some drawers. We will expand the island some direction, probably over here. You know, it just wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't include the time lapse. So, flint is going to be one thing, and we are definitely going to need to make a storage upgrade for it. Which, for these, it's not terrible to make. We can make it out of copper. I'll also prepare for the next two upgrades for this cobblestone generator the next upgrade is going to be making it into iron cobble gen tier 3 now with all of the cobblestone which we have i sifted loads of things and prepared and crafted a gold furnace this furnace smelts items at 120 ticks per item so it's a lot quicker than the standard furnace and later on, I threw in a speed upgrade, which halved the speed or half the cook time of the furnace. So it actually was 60 ticks per item. You can also automate the furnaces from the iron furnaces mod. If you set the inputs and outputs to auto in the inventory, you can tell it to input from the top, output to the left, and then input fuels from the right is what I have set up then any fuels which are actually in the chest will be pulled into the furnace. Any items which are in the top chest will be also pulled in and then it will auto eject to the chest to the left. Nice and simple, but gonna be very useful because we're gonna be sending a lot of items through this furnace. I'm now preparing loads of cobblestone to be hammered down into gravel and then we will do a ridiculous amount of sifting because we still need iron to upgrade the meshes in the sieves 
and we're going to need iron in the future definitely for machines my plans are mechanism for the first machines we build because that's what we're going to be going for well the first machine which we are going to pick up is going to be a coal generator and no it doesn't generate coal like the name suggests it generates power through burning coal I'm also going to spend the time and pick up this copper hammer. This just allows us to double the ores before we actually have a machine. So we can produce even more iron doing it that way. Well, it's now time to expand the starter island so that I have more space to build some machines. The first machines which we're going to build is going to be a metallurgic infuser so that we can produce steel enriched alloys and circuits which we need for all of the mechanism machines and we can also build the coal generator which means that we can start producing power which is going to be needed for some of the auto sieves which we're going to be setting up very shortly so time to place this coal generator down here seems fine you can fuel it with any combustible fuel we're going to use coal we're going to then craft up a metallurgic infuser so that we can produce steel circuits and enriched alloys. We're going to place it next to the coal generator so that it can get power from the coal generator. We don't need cables. We are now going to craft up two electronic circuits for the enrichment chamber. That's going to be the second machine which we make. After a little bit of time crafting, we now have the circuits. So we need to craft up steel, which is iron and coal in the metallurgic infuser. Now it's time for the enrichment chamber, which will allow us to produce enriched versions of materials, allowing for more efficient metallurgic infuser crafts. We also crafted up some basic universal cables. You need them to actually transfer power out of the coal generator. You can see that they filled up with energy and immediately filled the enrichment chamber. So we are now at the stage of the game where I would like to get some automatic sieve set up. But to do so, the setup which I want is going to require nether quartz, which is why we are having to craft up some soul sand. I need the nether quartz for a storage controller from functional storage. Yes, we are going to be setting up a fun little array for this. We are also going to need the specific tools from functional storage to actually be able to do this though, so we've also got to craft up them. That's not going to be too bad. And here we are. We now have the sieves completely set up. So we place the gravel in these slots here. Then the output for the sieve will output into the, into the storage controller, which will then output all of the drawers. And now that we have this auto sieve set up, I think it's time that we do a little bit of base building and prepare some materials for it. But to get some of the materials, most of the materials which I want are going to have to be made in the Ignis Extruder. The recipe for it we can actually make, but to be able to craft some of the things like deep slate and blackstone, you need some form of ice, and we don't have a way to produce that yet. However, we can make ice if we take a little bit of detour to Tinker's Construct and we do a little bit of applied energistics to make the entropy staff. The Tinker's Construct, we need a tool which has silk touch basically, so we can pick up ice in the world. And the entropy staff allows us to freeze water into ice. Let's begin by setting up automation for clay. This automation just uses an aqueous accumulator to produce infinite water. Sand goes in one side, gets placed in the barrel with water, and clay comes out the other side. I can now use the clay which we've produced renewably to make some grout, which is going to be our gateway into Tinker's Construct machines. Now it's time to set up the seared melter. This will just allow us to create the smeltery controller. By smelting four copper ingots inside the melter, then pouring them on top of a seared brick to produce a smeltery controller. Now it's time to set up this smeltery.
phantoms. Good fun. The first material which we're going to craft in the smelter is going to be rose gold. We need them to bake the silky modifier for Tinker's Construct tools. I'm also crafting up to ingot molds by melting some gold in the smeltery, then pouring it over any ingots, and then it will give you an ingot mold. This will just allow us to start casting ingots out of the smeltery so that we can extract things from it. So to actually craft pickaxe heads and all of the tools from Tinker's Construct for this version, it's a blank sand, sand cast with a pickaxe head, then you take it out, then it's a pickaxe head cast. Then you can basically pour what you want in here and it's a one-time cast. Amethyst bronze pickaxe head. Then we can craft this lovely Tinker's Construct pickaxe. 860 for durability, harvest level is diamond. Lovely little pickaxe, and this can be repaired using the Amethyst Bronze. But the main reason for this is we can get Silk Touch on it if we place five Silky Cloths. Which means we're one step done from this entire detour for what I want. Now it's time to begin the creation of an Entropy Staff. So we start off by collecting some coagulated blood balls from Tinker's Construct. They're basically slime balls, so we can get slime balls easily without the need of slimes. Now it's time to craft up an inscriber, which we're going to need for the entropy staff. Then I made the realization that we need more power. We need something more reliable than burning coal in the coal generator. So I made a big reactor from Big Reactors mod. This thing produces quite a bit of energy, but we ended up inserting the control rods to increase the efficiency and lower the energy output. Right, Entropy Manipulator. So we do need a way to charge this. So I nominate we make an energy cell from Mechanism. This will now fill up with energy, we can charge things in it. We jumped through all of these hoops just so that we can get some ice. So we can freeze ice. We can pick it up with a silk touch pickaxe. We can craft ice into packed ice. And the packed ice, as a reminder, we can now use it in the Ignis extruder. To make cobble deep slate, but I think we're going to build a second one. So we can have netherrack, cobble deep slate, and all of the other things which we need for these. Because we're going to be using, we're going to be basically using all of these special materials a lot. So we might as well build separate Ignis Extruder setups for it. Yes, let's go do that. I'm going to craft three Ignis Extruders and set these up in a row with one of them producing basalt, one producing deep slate, and then the other one producing cobble deep slate. I'm also going to do this in a time lapse because I have just realized that we have not done a time lapse in this episode. So we will do this right at the end of us building the Ignis extruders, which we're going to need. Let the time lapse commence. Well, I think this is probably a good point to wrap up the episode now. We've created all of these so we can actually start doing some base building.
with loads of special different resources. Mainly the Basalt and the Cobble Deep Slate. We also have Netherrack over here, Auto Sieves, Power Generation. Like, how is this for the first episode? We got pretty set up. So, I hope you have thoroughly enjoyed watching this as much as I've enjoyed playing. I hope to see you all again in the next episode of ATM7 to the sky.